Hey, Richard from Digital Foundry here looking at the PC version of The Evil Within. If you're watching this video, you probably know that out of the box at least, this release is pegged to a 30 FPS performance level, a limitation that can be overcome via in game console commands. However, if you run the game at stock settings with everything maxed, essentially you're getting the console experience with resolution and anti aliasing the only real differences. What you're looking at now is a three way comparison of a Core i7 3770K running at 4.3 GHz, paired with three GPUs a GTX 750 Ti, a GTX 760, and a top of the line GTX 980. The cheapest card, the 750 Ti, offers a performance level similar to console. You're at 30 FPS most of the time, but there are some dips. Both the GTX 760 and the 980 offer pretty much the exact same experience. A remarkable state of affairs bearing in mind that the 980 costs almost three times the price of a 760. In short, even with a mid-range GPU, you can't help but get the feeling that this game is selling you short. Bethesda's PC recommendations for the evil within made the outrageous claim that you'll need a 4GB graphics card for best performance. What's obvious is that 2GB cards cope just fine at 1080p, especially with the artificial 30fps cap in place. But what about unlocking the frame rate? Well, there's good news and bad news. The console commands do work, check out the video description for a link to getting those to work, but what is clear is that the game is still severely under optimised with distracting, fluctuating performance on each of our tested cards. Perhaps not surprisingly, the raw brute force of the GTX 980 gets us closest to a locked 60fps, but you'll note that we're still dropping frames and there are frame time issues too. At 60fps each frame should persist for 16 milliseconds. You can see there are 33 milliseconds and even the odd 50 millisecond drop, producing a really uneven experience. We get similar results on a GTX 780 too. We also tested the game on a Radeon R9 290X and it performed pretty much the same. What the hell? CPU wise, with the 30 FPS cap in place, we see no real difference running this game across either a Core i3, an i5, or a full on Quad i7. Unlocking the frame rate, again, there are no major differences between the quad core processors, but in the most demanding scenes, the Core i3 suffers. But again, we didn't see it drop beneath 30 FPS. Bethesda's recommended spec of a 4GB graphics card with an i7 CPU definitely seems to be overkill. Thanks to the limitations put in place on the game itself out of the box, this game should still perform at 30 FPS with an i3 and a decent 2GB GPU. Bearing in mind the surfeit of GPU and CPU power we have on tap here, it has to be said that these results are somewhat disappointing. The Evil Within bears all the hallmarks of a basic console port. You can get console-like results on fairly mediocre hardware, but for enthusiasts looking to push their kit, the game offers very little scalability beyond resolution boosts. Even with the latest Nvidia driver optimised for the game, the dynamic scaling technology on the GTX 980 doesn't appear to work, which is a real shame because downscaling from a higher resolution could easily help to resolve some of the evil within's obvious aliasing issues. It's interesting to note that in the game's current state we found it was absolutely impossible to run at a locked 1080p at 60fps with any of the kit that we've got available here. Bethesda has said that it intends to optimise the game for 60fps, but what's clear from our testing is that there's a lot of work to do. Anyway, we'll leave you with some more analysis, but for now, thanks for watching.
Hey, where's Joseph? Man, I'm sorry, but you never came out. I waited, but... Uh... Please, settle down, Leslie. 